what's triggered these proclamations. Since NASA presented the first images of the Super Telescope to the public in July of this year, the world of astronomers, cosmologists, and physicists has been upside down. Of course, everyone had equally hoped to learn more about the true origins and dimensions of the universe through the reach of the most expensive and best space telescope of all time. With a range of at least 13.5 billion light years, it was clear that with the new telescope, humans would, for the first time, be able to almost look back to the hypothesized Big Bang. This is said to have occurred 13.8 billion years ago, but this assumption will no longer hold in the future. The Oldest Galaxies in the Universe NASA and the U.S. President Joe Biden proudly made public the first image on July 11, 2022. Here, it's mainly the galaxy cluster SMAC 0723, about 4.6 billion light years away, that can be seen. The fact that these galaxies look as if they are pressed together in a cluster is due to the gravitational lensing effect. In fact, the galaxies in real space are not so compressed in one spot. The camera technology only compresses the image in order to get distances of several billion light years on one picture. This should make it clear that this image is not a realistic or true-to-scale representation of the cosmos. Astronomers and cosmologists measure the actual distances between the stars, galaxies, and other phenomena in space using techniques for determining the speed of light and the so-called red light shift. The higher their value, the farther an object is from Earth and the older it is as well. The first investigations of the galaxies glowing red in the image and the most distant galaxies caused a scientific sensation only a few days after the image was published. Quickly, it was clear that our previous picture of the origin history of the cosmos would have to be corrected. The oldest perfect galaxies, recorded by the Hubble Space Telescope, had redshift values of 10 to 11 z, and had thus developed approximately 400 million years after the Big Bang. So far, so good. And up to this point in the cosmic calendar, the Hubble data also fit with the current theories of the Big Bang, which state, among other things, that the first star clusters and galaxies may have existed from about 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. Now, however, the James Webb Telescope has a completely different reach and can look back even further. According to previous assumptions, the telescope would only have provided evidence of the formation of the first stars, or even gas clouds, in the depths of space. At best, James Webb might have found traces of the Big Bang. After all, the estimated range of the new telescope is at least 13.5 billion years. It would have been only a cosmic stone's throw to the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. But back to the deep field image that has caused so much hullabaloo. This beautiful, colorful image shows at least 88 fixed galaxies with redshifts between 11 and 20 z. The age of these galaxies is thus sufficient for a cosmic leap. Thus, the age of these galaxies reaches back to times that fall below the magic mark of 200 million years after the Big Bang. Now, according to previous theories, there should not have been much more than dust, gases, and darkness in this so-called dark age of the cosmos. The fact that at this time, complete, very massive, and luminous galaxies existed shows that something cannot be correct in the past theory of the Big Bang. The Big Message Big Bang Theory is Wrong the facts up to this point were already sufficient for some biting opponents of the Big Bang Theory to flood the net immediately after the publication of the data, with messages postulating the clear refutation of the Big Bang Theory. But this is not, in fact, warranted. Leading in the scientific battle about theories was the US-American para-astronomer and Big Bang critic Eric Lerner. In a much-noticed, but also much-criticized publication, Lerner quoted the renowned U.S. astronomer and Big Bang proponent, Allison Kirkpatrick, as saying, Right now, I'm lying awake at 3 in the morning, wondering if everything I've ever done was wrong. Lerner placed Kirkpatrick in the journalistic setting of a desperate scientist who had unofficially admitted that everything, or rather, the Big Bang theory, was wrong. Big Bang defenders, Big Bang opponents, and supporters of completely different theories about the origin of the universe 
have since delivered battling assertions, counterstatements, scientific justifications, and every manner of new speculation. The already mentioned astronomer Alison Kirkpatrick explained later to the US magazine Space that her statement had been taken completely out of context by Eric Lerner and had been misused for his lurid theses. Kirkpatrick does not see the discoveries so far as evidence that speaks against the Big Bang. Rather, the discoveries could indicate that stars and galaxies formed much earlier than previously thought. So we can't yet speak of proofs against the Big Bang theory or a clear refutation at this point. The Theory of Big Bang Let us consider the Big Bang at this point once again. About 100 years ago, the French astrophysicist and priest Georges Lemaitre and the U.S. astronomer Edwin Hubble researched the distances and motion properties of galaxies in space at about the same time and yet independently of each other. Among other things, they found that the more distant celestial bodies in galaxies were moving away from each other faster than the closer ones. From this observation, the two astronomers concluded in simple terms that the universe was expanding. In the same era, atomic physics was making significant progress. The two astronomers combined some approaches of both disciplines and finally came to the conclusion that the expansion and the whole development of the universe could be explained only with a starting point. According to the Big Bang Theory, 13.8 billion years ago, all material phenomena of the universe were contained in a kind of primordial seed. The idea of this seed corresponded approximately to those of an atom, or better yet, a tiny and nevertheless incredibly potent primeval particle. This mini-particle appeared, for as yet unexplained reasons, in a nothingness which existed before the time of the Big Bang, or perhaps not at all. All clear? Finally, this primeval particle was set in motion by an also not more exactly explicable event. Whether it really exploded with a bang, or whether the birth of the universe was a completely quiet process, we do not know. The previous calculations assumed that the universe was about 10 trillion degrees hot at the moment of the Big Bang. Only one second after the event, the freshly born universe is said to have cooled down so drastically that the first elementary particles such as quarks and gluons were formed. Fractions of a second later, protons and neutrons formed the building blocks of future atomic nuclei. Nevertheless, protons and neutrons could form only very unstable structures of hydrogen and helium about three minutes after the Big Bang. For solid compounds like atoms and molecules, it was still much too hot. After this first phase of the formation and the nuclear fusions of elements, according to previous assumptions, there was calm in space for a very, very long time. The cosmos was a dark, turbid primeval soup and cooled down more and more until at a temperature of about 2,700 degrees, the formation of the first stable atoms and gases was possible. Finally, immense forces accelerated whole gas clouds, whereby these became spiral-shaped formations in which the first stars developed. With them, luminosity came into the universe. Here, we would be, according to past assumptions, 100 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. But now we know very probably that at this point, there were already complete and very well-developed galaxies. A galaxy with a redshift of 20z would have originated according to past measuring methods in the period before 200 million years after the Big Bang. And as it looks, such galaxies exist. If you've been listening quite attentively, you noticed words like probably and as it looks, because there is so far no proof for the true existence of galaxies with 20z. Some researchers propose that something could be wrong with the previous assumptions about the significance of the redshift or also with other interstellar measuring techniques. This cannot be completely ruled out. Realistically, we have only very few capabilities for measuring the universe from the Earth. No one has yet traveled with the cosmic folding rule, and so far, only one man-made object has flown into interstellar space the Voyager probe. It's certain that the calculations of the astronomers within our solar system showed good reliability so far. After all, we humans have managed to send probes to all the planets in the system several times over the last 100 years. 
And this would not have been possible without reliable values on distances and times. Nevertheless, researchers in our own solar system have been amazed again and again over the last decades. Hardly any probe has fully confirmed the previous picture of our cosmic neighbors. The real images and measurement data provided quite different impressions, and usually big surprises. So why should this be any different with the data from the James Webb Telescope? So what does this mean for science? To conclude, let's now look at possible further scenarios. According to the current state of knowledge, it would be quite possible that the Big Bang existed in spite of the new data. It then perhaps took place 15, 20, or 100 billion years ago. If it should turn out that our measuring methods for the speed of light and redshift are wrong, a completely new picture of the cosmos could emerge. Perhaps the next solar systems are then not 4 or 12 light years away, but only some few trillion miles. It would be conceivable that still more and still older galaxies can be found, taking us farther away from the idea of a starting point. Up to now, two further anomalies were noticed in the photographs of James Webb that can possibly deliver clues. So, for example, the galaxy Sears 1749 with a redshift of scarcely 17z made itself known when researchers arrived at extremely contradictory measuring data. This galaxy, which was formed about 220 million years after the assumed Big Bang, is spatially in the neighborhood of galaxies, which have values of 5z and are thus much younger. Sears 1749, about which we reported in detail in another video, got the nickname Schrodinger's Galaxy because it's at two places and in two times at the same time. These data could help the theories of the multiverse or the pocket universe to new popularity. Or maybe we are only in a computer simulation in which an intelligent and changeable cosmos plays cat and mouse with us. Whenever we think to have found a solution and explanations, this flexible universe eludes all attempts of explanation and serves up a new task for researchers to puzzle over. James Webb is a space telescope that was specially designed to show us the beginnings of the cosmos. Its range of about 13.5 billion years takes us to the epoch shortly after the end of the great darkness in the universe. At this time, the first stars are said to have appeared. Light filled the previously dark space, and then at some point, the first stars came together to form groups, which billions of years later became the enormous galaxies we can still see today. However, recent observations by James Webb have revealed a remarkable number of galaxies with surprising details. The observational results have shaken the scientific community, and they show us in an impressive way that the beginning of the universe was quite different. The universe as an immeasurable sea of stars, galaxies, and unfathomable phenomena still remained largely a mystery that we could never quite decipher, despite the many scientific explanations we have. For around 100 years, we were certain that we knew how the universe began. With a Big Bang, an event that gave birth to everything, we can see today from a single dense and unimaginably hot point. But this idea is slowly crumbling. Every advance in astronomy and cosmology takes us a little further in our understanding of this infinite space. And now we are on the brink of a veritable revolution. For a long time, the latest observations made by Hubble and many of the world's best telescopes seem to support the old theories. But now everything is different. Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago? Wrong. Have you ever wondered how scientists came up with the age of the universe, even though they have never seen the universe in its entirety? It was something like this. Two researchers named George Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble observed galaxies moving away from each other around 100 years ago. It was then that the redshift was first noticed, which scientists still use today to determine the distance and age of galaxies. The behavior of the galaxies led Lemaitre to conclude that the universe must have once begun at a single point. Since then, astronomers and cosmologists have spent decades collecting more and more data by meticulously observing the movement of galaxies and using these patterns to back calculate. They took all known physical quantities and laws and then calculated an age of 13.6 billion years. It was only a few years ago that this figure was corrected to 13.8 billion years. 
The reason for this adjustment was that technology had improved considerably in the meantime. One of the main sources of information for astronomers is the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is considered to be a remnant of the Big Bang and, like the movements of galaxies, shows signs of an expansion of the universe. However, there were also doubts about the calculations, as the universe does not show the same linear expansion behavior everywhere. These observations led researchers to other exciting ideas. Lemet and Hubble's idea was comparable to a whirlpool fed from a single source. The swirling motion of the water initially suggested that there was only one source. However, researchers have since found movements in the cosmos that look like a whirlpool, in which the drive of the water and the spirals suggest several drives. At this point, completely new theories of the pocket universe the universe within the universe, and the bubble universe emerged. The latest observations from the James Webb Space Telescope are now giving new impetus to such theories. Whether we will soon have certainty about the multiverse is truly written in the stars, but what is certain to come is the complete reassessment of the age of the universe. James Webb surprised everyone. Who would have thought that this telescope would turn the world of science completely upside down? James Webb was actually sent into space to finally confirm theories such as the Big Bang, the dark era of the universe, and the cosmic dawn. But the images from the new telescope show an unexpectedly large number of galaxies that are characterized by their smooth nature and great age. These discoveries are in complete contradiction to what many astronomers and cosmologists have predicted based on the Big Bang theory, the traditional idea that the universe emerged from an initial, highly dense and hot state and has been steadily expanding ever since, is called into question by these new observations. In particular, the existence of galaxies that are ancient and surprisingly structured does not fit the picture of a young, chaotic universe. The oldest galaxies discovered by Webb are Glass Z13 and Macy's Galaxy, both have a redshift of approximately 13 Z and are therefore far older than 13.5 billion years. At the time they emitted this light, they could have been just 200 to 300 million years old according to the Big Bang Theory. If we subtract another 100 million years, which would roughly correspond to the Dark Epoch, we would arrive at an age of 100 to 200 million years. The catch is that the same laws that led to the calculation of the Big Bang and the age of the universe mean that exactly this is not possible. Galaxies of this smoothness and structure take billions of years to evolve. This would mean that these two galaxies would be older than the universe itself, and that could not be the case. These discrepancies between observation and theory have now led to a wave of discussion and speculation in the astronomical community. Also wrong, the merger theory. In this context, let's take another look at the merger theory, which is a central component of modern cosmology. It states that galaxies grow and evolve through the process of colliding and merging with other galaxies. This theory explains how small, primitive galaxies evolved into the complex structures we observe in the universe today. If the age of the universe is roughly correct and galaxies such as Glass C13 or Macy's Galaxy have simply grown faster than previously assumed, there must be something wrong with the merger theory. In very simplified terms, the model assumes that smaller star clusters have merged with other star clusters, forming the first small bulky galaxies, and later, through further and further mergers with other galaxies, these became such magnificent phenomena as our Milky Way or the Andromeda Galaxy. However, the data from the Webb telescope show a different picture. Galaxies that already have a complex structure at an early stage of their existence. If galaxies already exhibit complex structures at an early stage of their development, then scientists must also completely reassess their role of collisions and mergers in galaxy development. Until now, for example, researchers have assumed that magnificent shapes, such as the spiral or even the wagon wheel-like galaxies, could have played a more important role in the early evolution of galaxies than previously assumed. Expansion and the Big Bang do not go together. Here's an interesting fact you may never have heard of. Scientists were, after all, ultimately using the idea of expansion and extrapolating events back to the Big Bang based on these observations. 
But the discoveries of the Webb telescope also shed a completely new light on the theory of cosmic expansion. The existence of old, structured galaxies in a state that is not consistent with a continuous expansion could be proof that the universe is not expanding and that the movements that we have interpreted as expansion have a completely different cause. In fact, the existence of these old, structured galaxies even allows us to conclude that the universe was in a stable state 13.5 or 13.8 billion years ago. This would also mean that the Big Bang and the expansion driven by it may never have happened. At present, there is much more evidence that all these theories are wrong, or at least have significant weaknesses. Researchers are still trying to somehow adapt the new findings to the old, standard model. The traditional view of the Big Bang describes it as the moment when the universe emerged from an extremely hot and dense state and began to expand. However, the new telescope observations suggest that the Big Bang was not the absolute beginning of the universe. An alternative theory that is officially being considered is Sir Roger Penrose's cyclical universe model. The British researcher describes the Big Bang merely as a transitional stage from one universe to another. This would mean that the universe is only one of many in a much larger cosmic cycle, and the theory leaves room for certain structures of the old universe to appear in the new one. But even according to Penrose's idea, there was a starting point from which new stars and galaxies should have formed. However, we currently see absolutely nothing of these. The researchers only found galaxies that all appear to be very old. This actually speaks for a universe that is much older than previously assumed, and possibly also for a universe that is infinite in both time and space. Scientists know this model as the steady-state universe, which is an eternal, unchanging universe, without beginning or end. Although this idea stands in stark contrast to the idea of a dynamic, evolving universe, it could provide a possible explanation for the existence of the old, structured galaxies. Will we ever know the truth? The magical thing about all these discoveries is the threshold they now bring us to. The old theories can no longer be upheld, and we will surely soon have a completely new cosmological worldview. It's not yet certain what this new picture and knowledge will look like, nor do we know when it will be ready. Ultimately, we need more evidence and more images from the early era of the universe. It is also possible that researchers will find the common thread using the data already available and will be able to combine other theories and current observations to create a new, coherent picture of the world. This may even bring us closer to Albert Einstein's lifelong dream. The greatest astrophysicist of all time dreamed of summarizing all the phenomena of the cosmos and all the forces at work in it in a unified field formula. He never succeeded. His own discovery, of all things, thwarted his plans. What many people do not know is that Einstein was not awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the equations of relativity, but for the first discovery and description of a particle of light that we now know as a quantum. Einstein ushered in the era of quantum physics, which was not at all compatible with the theories from the world of great phenomena. The Big Bang Before we go into more detail about this revolutionary, sensational discovery, let's refresh our memory for a moment. So, what is behind the oft-quoted concept of the Big Bang, which is known to describe the creation of the universe? Well, contrary to the first assumption and some representations, it was not a brute explosion into an existing space. It was rather the space itself which originated about 13.8 billion years ago, together with all matter and time from an original singularity. Once again, a brief reminder. In the world of physics and astronomy, the designation singularity describes places where gravity is so extreme that the curvature of space-time diverges, or in other words, is infinite. But how can we be sure today, so many billions of years after the birth of the universe, that our cosmic home was formed within the framework of such a process? Concerning this, experts refer to a characteristic which was inherent in the universe already since the very beginning of its existence. It expands unchecked. But also in this case, it's necessary to consider one thing. The cosmos does not expand into an existing space, it's the space which becomes bigger incessantly. Now it's possible for experts to consider the expansion of the cosmos backwards 
and to calculate back to that point which embodies the origin of the universe. As an outstanding proof of the correctness of the Big Bang theory, the proof of the cosmic microwave background radiation is listed, a nearly isotropic radiation that fills the entire universe and represents a relic from the early days of the cosmos. At this point, it should be mentioned, however, that the individual Big Bang theories explicitly do not deal with the actual birth of the universe, but with the immediate phase afterwards. In detail, we move here in an order of magnitude between a so-called Planck time, that is, about 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds and 400,000 years after the Big Bang. And even though we have no idea so far what the cosmic state was like before the mysterious Planck time, the Big Bang theory has an unshakable position within the standard model of cosmology. Things get particularly tricky, therefore, when researchers uncover something that simply cannot be reconciled with our current theories and that even provides reason to question everything we think we know about the origin of the universe. Impossible Galaxies If one follows exactly those common theses, then the first stars began about 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang to shine and to drive away the Dark Age. When the first glistening bright celestial bodies came together to full-grown galaxies, and how fast these grew up, is still completely uncertain. A first clue to the solution of this galactic riddle was provided by some of the first James Webb images. As early as July 2022, experts announced that the Space Telescope had detected a number of galaxies, some of which already existed 300 million years after the formation of the universe. Compared to the structures that blossomed in the following millions of years, however, these were still significantly smaller and lower in mass. A scheme which agrees perfectly with the official models of the researchers, because after all, the density of the matter in the young universe was simply not sufficient to form galaxies of the size of the Milky Way. Or was it? What began as the discovery of six inconspicuous, reddish shimmering points of light was ultimately to trigger one of the greatest astronomical crises of the recent past. But what had happened? Although the newly discovered galaxies are of comparable age to the previous record holders, they are almost as massive as our home galaxy is today. That astronomical research is now richer by a tantalizing mystery is thanks to the team led by Ivo LeBay of Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne. After scrutinizing a series of images taken by the near-infrared camera, NearCam, the experts finally stumbled upon the aforementioned light sources. With the help of the redshift, the scientists calculated that the light of those objects needed over 13 billion years in order to graze our terrestrial eye. Consequently, we are dealing with structures that already existed 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. The evaluation of the characteristics provided again the realization that Webb had caught six very early galaxies on picture, and indeed six galaxies which were so massive that they contradict the usual assumptions of cosmology. Astronomical Dead End Instead of encountering the expected galactic midgets, Webb identified structures that were nearly as massive as the Milky Way despite their early formation date. If one follows the analysis of the collected data, the gravitationally bound star collections already possessed more than 10 billion solar masses at that time. One of them might even have broken the mark of 100 billion solar masses. The problem? According to our current knowledge, this was simply not possible. A thought which also drove through the heads of scientists why they believed at first to have made a mistake. However, this suspicion could not be confirmed in the context of detailed follow-up investigations. The only remaining hope of the experts consists now in the fact that the six objects do not embody in truth by far the most massive galaxies of the early time, but other formations, as for instance black holes, which lie hidden behind an impenetrable dust wall. But if you think that this solves the mystery, you're wrong. Even in this case, there would have been much more stellar mass in the early universe than assumed so far. Since shortly after the Big Bang, not enough normal matter existed to form so many stars in such a short period of time. The detected objects are in stark contradiction to practically all common cosmological theories. 
even if only one galaxy turns out to be real, this would go beyond the limits of our previous assumptions. In order to be able to explain the existence of the structures, the density of matter in the early cosmos would have to have been up to five times larger than assumed so far. The other, not less mysterious explanation approach is based on the fact that the galaxies developed in a way which is completely unknown to us thus far. The Big Bang Debate This and further discoveries provide for the fact that at present, more and more researchers turn away from the Big Bang theory. Many astronomers, who show a more alternative point of view, complain about the fact that they are not listened to in the scientific journals. What's more, he who expresses his doubts about the existing theses is often regarded even as crazy. However, one thing is undisputed. Experts who still hold on to the Big Bang are confronted again and again with questions to which there are no clear answers. These include, in particular, questions of why and how. How can it be that 13.8 billion years ago, something came into being out of literally nothing? Can anything form out of nothing at all? And was there a compelling trigger for this, or was it merely a coincidence? In this regard, Stephen Hawking pointed out that time itself began only with the Big Bang. Consequently, this process could not have been triggered by something or someone. No less controversial is the question of the uniform radiation and density in the cosmos. No matter in which direction or in which distances we look, on a large scale, similar densities and distributions of galaxies, nebulae, and radiation exist everywhere. The conservative experts explain this with cosmic inflation, while other experts take up this assumption and spin it a bit further. According to chaotic inflation, it is conceivable that this process came to a standstill only in some bubble-shaped sub-ranges and continues otherwise eternally. This also means that a multiplicity of sub-universes is formed in the bubbles, whereby each cosmic world contains its individual physical laws. Against this background, therefore, a fundamental question arises. What if the cosmos does not embody the great whole at all? What's more, if another universe already existed before ours, in that case, the Big Bang would have to turn into a Big Bounce. Alternative Theories If we follow this theory, words like beginning and end are moot in the cosmic context. What we commonly refer to as the Big Bang was in fact nothing more than a cyclical transition. As soon as one universe dies, a new one grows out of it. According to this, the universe which is part of a multidimensional structure within this model is subject to an eternal rhythm of collapse and resurrection. However, this is by far not the only explanation approach which has led the field further apart from the Big Bang theory. As early as 1955, for example, an article appeared in NASA's Cosmic Times arguing that there never was a Big Bang because the universe has existed for an infinitely long time. The expansion of the cosmos is also non-existent. The constant formation of matter merely gives the impression that the universe is constantly expanding. The equally most exciting and most controversial theory of origin comes again from the world of quantum physics and string theory. Supposedly, experiments showed that the universe and everything in it, in fact, does not exist at all. In simple terms, what we perceive as the visible universe is nothing more than a flat hologram projected onto a sphere. Consequently, it's possible that we together in our reality are the result of a superordinate simulation. What at first sounds like a plot of a wacky science fiction flick can actually be reconciled with the so-called Kardashev scale. This categorization indicates how far a civilization is developed on the basis of its energy use. If there really is a civilization of type 3, which is able to use the total power of a full-grown galaxy, it could have succeeded in creating a perfect simulation with the help of a so-called Matryoshka brain. But whether we would really wish to know the truth in such a case is another matter entirely. And with that, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and leave us a thumbs up if you liked our video. Now, we're curious about your opinion. Do you still believe in the Big Bang Theory? Or do the alternate explanations seem more plausible to you? 
Hardly any school children today know the name Fritz Wicke, but we do know names such as Albert Einstein, George Lemaitre, and Edwin Hubble. These are the researchers whose theories laid the foundation of our cosmology for almost 100 years. Albert Einstein described space-time, Lemaitre came up with the Big Bang, and Hubble observed the apparent expansion of the universe. But now all these theories are being put to the test, and the new superstar among telescopes is responsible for this, the James Webb Space Telescope. This marvel of technology has given us so many fascinating images of a previously unknown universe that we now know. The old theories can only be wrong, or at least incomplete. Fritz Wicke was a contemporary of these great researchers, the Swiss physicist who also studied the movement of galaxies and the dynamics of the cosmos, came up with a theory that is once again topical and the subject of heated debate today. The idea of tired light is very simple. Zwicky postulated that light is not constant, as Einstein claimed, but that it undergoes a physical change during its journey through time and space, which he called fatigue. Einstein said that nothing travels faster than light and that the speed of light is always constant and does not behave relatively like all other known forces in the universe. It seems logical that researchers have long used light and the speed of light as the great benchmarks for exploring the universe and determining such important values as distances and the rate of expansion. Before we look at the possible flaws in these theories, let's take a look at some of the fascinating galaxies discovered by the Webb Telescope. Galaxies that are absolutely impossible. With its ultra-fine sensors, the Webb Telescope looks further back in time than any other telescope before it. Thanks to red light spectrography, Webb can detect light that is very small and very shifted into the red. The first deep image of the universe showed galaxies that existed in an epoch 13.6 billion years ago. The amazing thing was that no galaxies actually existed at that time. It all started with the astonishing discovery by Harvard student Rohan Naidu. He and his team announced the discovery of GLASS-Z13, a galaxy that demonstrably existed around 200 million years after the assumed Big Bang. Its age already suggested at the beginning of the Webb era that galaxies could have evolved faster and earlier than previously assumed. However, some researchers did not believe this at first. GN-Z11 followed and, with an estimated age of 13.4 billion years, this galaxy once again provided overwhelming proof that the old theories are no longer tenable. GN-Z11 is one of the most distant known objects in the universe and was originally discovered by Hubble, the Old Space Telescope. The discovery was only confirmed by the new Webb Telescope. GN-Z11 offers insights into early star formation and galaxy formation in the young universe thanks to Webb's stunningly accurate spectrometer analyses. It is currently clear that stars and finished galaxies existed much earlier than previously known. Sears-93316 was discovered by the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey. This galaxy was originally estimated to be an incredible 13.8 billion years old, which has sparked enthusiasm among some researchers and brought others to the barricades. The other galaxies still allowed for ideas of a much faster evolution of matter. This was, so to speak, the loophole for all the researchers who were only too happy to hold on to the Big Bang. A galaxy that is just as old as the Big Bang blows up this picture and makes new approaches such as the eternal universe or Zwicky's theory of tired light more likely. The age of Sears-93316 is still the subject of heated debate, with the discoverers constantly presenting new evidence for the authenticity of the find and critics attempting to refute this evidence. HD1 is another unusual galaxy and has an estimated age of 13.5 billion years. It is one of the most luminous galaxies among the very old galaxies discovered so far, indicating an unusually high rate of star formation. These are the facts that scientists are looking for because HD1 could help us to significantly deepen our understanding of the conditions and processes in the universe during this epoch. Let's take another look at Max 0647-JD. It's not one of the more unknown newly discovered galaxies, but it still has some interesting features. Max 0647-JD 
was discovered by gravitational lensing with the Hubble Space Telescope and then further studied with the Webb Telescope. With an estimated age of 13.3 billion years, Max 0647-JD is not one of the oldest galaxies, but strangely one of the most evolved. It only existed 500 million years after the Big Bang, but shows such a high degree of order and size that this galaxy should actually be several billion years old. This means that the time of formation of this galaxy would also have been before the Big Bang, which cannot be the case. These galaxies are only 5 of 15 confirmed impossible galaxies, and there are more and more. Tired Light Zwicky already knew it 100 years ago. Imagine, the most crucial component that scientists have used to study the universe has been misunderstood until now. Light is not constant but becomes tired over time. Minimal differences are enough to change distances of several million light years in such a way that our measurements are completely wrong. Another possibility within this theory is that light physically behaved completely differently 13 billion years ago. You have to imagine that the light that now hits the observation mirrors of the Webb telescope was emitted 13 billion years ago, or more, by stars that no longer exist. Of course, the Earth did not exist at that time, not even our Sun, and it's very likely that only a small precursor of our galaxy existed. These particles of light therefore traveled incredibly far and for an incredibly long time. As the light traveled, space also expanded. If the idea of the expansion of the universe is really true, this expansion could have stretched the light, but we don't know that for sure. We have no way of measuring or investigating the original light. We can only deal with the light that has undergone this extremely long journey. We could also never travel back to the time when the light was created. Despite these hurdles, these faint light signals are actually miraculous. The mysteries of time and space and the journey of light allow us today to study the universe as it was 13.5 billion years ago. This is fantastic. Interpreting the signals is really a bit of a guessing game. Researchers have to take all the fixed, known quantities, then derive constants, similarities, and a meaning. This is how our theories and explanations are created. In addition to light, there are several other quantities that researchers use to measure and describe space. These are certain phenomena that always behave in the same or coherent way. If it now turns out that this was precisely the mistake, we really are facing a complete reorientation of science. Rajendra Gupta is a Canadian researcher who, in 2023, put forward a theory that shows that a small modification of these cosmic constants quickly leads to a much older universe. But not only the age of the cosmos would then change, variables relating to expansion and origin could also be completely different. Gupta presented a coherent calculation according to which the universe could be 26.7 billion years old. However, he also showed that a further small adjustment would lead to an age of 40 billion years. This would explain in a simple way why we see masses of galaxies in Webb's images that suggest a much older universe. Gupta also considers Wiki's ideas and shows that the picture of our universe turns 180 degrees when just this one small component of tired light is taken into account. Science can go no further. It is fascinating to observe how the world of science reacts to the new circumstances. One person who is excited about the new findings is U.S. astronomer and astrophysicist Michio Kaku. Kaku is regarded as an exceptional researcher who has written many books to bring the mystery of the universe closer to ordinary people. He enthusiastically explained that the Webb telescope completely reshuffles the cards in science, and Kaku welcomes the changes. He knew for a long time that something couldn't be right. Kaku, in addition to his passion for the visible universe, is a big proponent of quantum physics. Quantum physics and classical physics still don't really go hand in hand, which proves once again that we must have a flaw in the system. Other researchers, such as the project leader of the Webb Telescope, John Mather, are sticking to the old theories. Mather told the press that he firmly believes that the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago was correct and that matter and therefore galaxies were formed faster than previously assumed. A third scientific genius whose name is currently being discussed a lot in the press 
is Sir Roger Penrose. A few years ago, the scientist from Great Britain postulated a cyclical universe in which there is a kind of basic matrix that transports the idea of matter from an old universe into a new one. According to this, all information is stored when an old universe dies, and in this way, matter could be quasi-turbo recycled in a new universe, which could have led to a faster formation of stars and galaxies. Penrose's model also predicts that black holes play a crucial role in these cycles. In his model, they are pretty much the last objects or physical entities left at the end of a universe. After they have sucked all the matter into themselves, they evaporate or collapse at lightning speed. This moment of collapse is basically the birth idea of the new universe. Surprisingly, several research groups from the USA proved in 2023 the roots of the universe. The oft-used folk saying goes, nothing comes from nothing. While in everyday life, this saying sometimes refers to one's own work ethic, that quote also describes an apparent paradox from the world of astronomy. How can it be that something, in this case the universe, came from nothing? Commonly, our understanding says that something can exist only if it has formed from an already existing material or another component. Transferred to the cosmos, therefore, the central question arises, where did the material come from that produced the Big Bang? And in which way was this origin component of the universe formed? To understand how some experts approach this complex question, we must first turn the wheel of time forward by many billions of years. A theory says that one day the last star in the universe will burn up, whereupon the cosmos will change to a lightless void. The extinction of the last star represents accordingly the prelude to an infinitely long, dark epoch, within which all matter will be consumed by gigantic black holes. The corresponding gravity monsters will also evaporate thereupon. At the same time, space will continue to expand before activity in the cosmos comes to a complete halt. Or will it? In fact, some researchers are convinced that just such an empty, dark, and cold universe, which will come into being in the distant future, was the cornerstone of our Big Bang. How did matter come into being? Before we go into more detail about this exciting theory, we should first consider how physical matter came into being in the first place. If we want to explain the roots of stable matter from molecules or atoms, the complication arises that such matter did not exist either during the Big Bang or in the millennia that followed. It is true that experts today can understand how the first atoms emerged from simpler particles once the appropriate conditions were in place to keep complex matter stable. Scientists can also answer the question of how these atoms later fused into stars to form heavier elements. However, the corresponding models cannot explain how something can come into being out of nothing. Therefore, it's advisable to think back on the wheel of time even further. Protons and neutrons, which together form the nucleus of an atom, represented the first long-lived particles of matter in the cosmos. They were formed about one ten-thousandth of a second after the Big Bang. Thus, no matter in the true sense of the definition existed before. Fortunately, physics allows us to trace that time span back even further to those processes that took place before the formation of stable matter. That era is called the Great Unified Epoch in the expert world. However, it should be mentioned at this point that we are entering the world of speculative physics. Within their experiments, scientists simply cannot generate enough energy to authentically recreate the processes of that time. One widespread thesis in this respect is based on the fact that the physical world at that time consisted of a mixture of short-lived elementary particles. This also included quarks, or in other words, the basic building blocks of protons and neutrons. The relation of matter and antimatter might have been in a meticulous equilibrium. This means that every kind of matter particle had a mirror-like antimatter counterpart, which differed from its counterpart in only one aspect. However, antimatter and matter annihilate each other as soon as they meet. The physical particle world was subject, therefore, to a rhythm from constant destruction and new formation. However, also this constellation cannot explain to us still how these particles originated. The quantum field theory states that even a vacuum, which by definition corresponds to an empty space, is bursting with physical activity. In detail, this activity is said to take place there in the form of energy fluctuations. These fluctuating continuous changes of states could thus cause particles to appear, only to disappear again afterwards. In fact, 
experts have already succeeded in discovering such particles in experiments. Even in the vacuum of space-time, there are particles that appear to be formed out of nothing, only to disappear again. The Origin of Space-Time we dedicate ourselves now to the question, how did space-time itself originate? To get to the bottom of this cosmic mystery, we must go to the so-called Planck era. This era describes the first phase in the development of the universe after the Big Bang. According to the unanimous opinion of experts, only one fundamental force existed at that time, which is appropriately called the primordial force. Applied to practice, this meant gravity, electromagnetic, weak, as well as strong interaction, were indistinguishable from each other at that time. The problem? Our current theories are not able to decipher the physics of the Planck era in a comprehensible way. To fully understand the Planck era, we would need a theory of quantum gravity that combines quantum mechanics with general relativity. Although there are no perfect models in this respect, there are promising approaches, such as string theory or loop quantum gravity. Within these models, space and time are considered emergent. The term emergence generally describes the possibility of the formation of new properties or structures of a system as a result of the interaction of its elements. What we perceive as space and time in our reality is in fact the result of complex quantum processes that take place on a level that is not tangible for us. Since our conventional understanding reaches its limits within the Planck era, we cannot rely on our common understanding of cause and effect there. In spite of this, all plausible theses of quantum gravity describe something physical which happened in the then primordial epoch of the universe, a kind of precursor of ordinary space and time. But also here the question arises, where did this physical something come from? The sobering answer is, we simply do not know at present. What is certain, however, is this. So far, no confirmed cases could be proven in the world of physics in which something came into being out of nothing. Nothingness as origin? To conclude today's post, let's take a closer look at the exciting theory we touched on at the beginning of our video. Physicist Roger Penrose put forward an exciting, albeit controversial, model that depicts a cyclical universe. For example, the expert recognized that there are striking mathematical similarities between an extremely hot, dense, small state of the universe, as commonly postulated in the context of the Big Bang, and an extremely cold, empty, expanding state of the cosmos, which scientists theorize will occur in the distant future. These recognized similarities in turn led Penrose to a unique conclusion. If the described states are brought to their limits, they are identical from a mathematical point of view. Thus, the paradox that emerges is, the complete absence of matter could have produced all the matter we find in the universe today in the first place. Seen from this point of view, our present universe therefore originated from a state which comes as close as possible to the often quoted nothing, namely from that which remains if the whole matter of the cosmos was destroyed by black holes which have decayed in turn into photons. But how can it be explained that a cold, empty universe is equal to a hot, dense universe? To understand this, we have to make a detour to a complex mathematical procedure, the so-called conformal scaling. In simple terms, this is a geometric transformation that changes the size of an object but leaves its shape intact. Penrose's models thus show how the two states of the universe can be related so that the shapes of their spacetimes match. Granted, the idea that two objects are identical, although they have different sizes, seems difficult to grasp. However, Penrose states in this respect that size does not play an overriding role under such extreme physical conditions. The same is valid for time, the cold and the hot, dense state of the universe are on different timelines. While the cold, empty state seems to the observer as if it would last eternally, the hot, dense state which came out of it inhabits its very own timeline. Even if Penrose's conjecture should one day be confirmed, there are still some profound questions to be answered. The Big Question of Before We humans are almost obsessed with these questions. What happened at the beginning of time? And what happened before that? As if in the answer to these questions, the holy grail of science, and perhaps also of the human being, lies. Astronomers, cosmologists, and physicists have researched this question for decades and longer. If we ask about the before, it was up to now, always about the time or space before the Big Bang. But as you've probably already noticed, at present, there is a completely different question. 
Did the Big Bang exist at all? Since summer last year, the theory of the Big Bang wavers enormously. We'll still refer to the Big Bang theory here and there in this video, simply for the reason that it was the basis of all further assumptions about the origin and also the possible state of being before the beginning for almost 100 years. Everything we know and think to know about the beginnings of the universe comes from mathematical models and simulations. Even from the Big Bang theory, there are different variants which differ slightly. These theories all refer to the actual birth moment of the universe and the time immediately afterwards. What was before the Big Bang, we can say at present still less with certainty. All theories around the birth moment of the cosmos had to be in accordance with the equations of the classical relativity theory of Albert Einstein. For nearly 100 years, these basic mathematical and physical assumptions about the nature of our cosmos were considered the ultimate in astronomy and cosmology. In very simplified terms, the theory of relativity provided the foundations for all calculations and simulations of velocities, acceleration, space, time, and mass, as well as relationships between them. Einstein's formulas are largely correct up until today. However, they could also never describe the whole of creation. Quantum mechanics, with which Einstein was at war all his life, provides new approaches and spaces, which are largely compatible with the theory of relativity, but must also leave room for the new and unknown. The universe created from a starting point. Previous theories about the Big Bang say that the entire cosmos we can see today arose from a single starting point. This may have been so tiny that it was smaller than an atom. Basis of the Big Bang theory is the phenomenon of singularity. This says that the whole potential of today's gigantic and drifting apart cosmos was contained in a single mini point. Shortly after the Big Bang, the cosmos might have been a dense primordial soup, incredibly hot and churning. The beginning time, at which all later developed primeval forces of the cosmos were still bundled in a single energy, is called the Planck era. Only much later, the forces, electromagnetism, gravitation, as well as weak and strong interaction, came up, which are still effective today. To learn more about the beginning, and thus perhaps about what came before, researchers would need to know more about the nature of the first energy during this Planck era. In the meantime, researchers assume that some kind of gravity was at work here. Only this gravity was not attractive as we know it from our Earth's gravity or even the Sun's gravitational pull. Rather, this gravitational force was pushing away and apart. Already, in beginning moments, there was a sea of neutrons, protons, electrons, anti-electrons, or positrons, photons, and neutrinos in the cosmos. In the first second of the young universe, neutrinos decoupled to form the cosmic neutrino background. However, for a long time, temperatures were still much too hot for particles to form solid bonds. Only much later, heavy elements fused and the first molecule was very probably hydrogen. After more than 100,000 years, hydrogen and helium hydride reacted to form molecular hydrogen, which served as fuel and breathed new energy into the whole. These processes finally made possible the formation of the first stars. Let there be light. And it became light. About 370,000 years ago, newly formed atoms of hydrogen and helium with traces of lithium began to release photons, tiny particles of light. And these photons of, let's say, not quite the first hour of the universe, we can still observe and measure today as the cosmic microwave background. This cosmic microwave background is consequently the oldest observation possibility which we have at present about the universe. But you already see that this source of information leaves open an epoch of at least 370,000 years where we just do not know what has been. Can a telescope look back to the Big Bang? 
The new James Webb Telescope has a range of about 13.5 billion years. Now, of course, one might get the idea that scientists can use the telescope to look back to just about the Big Bang. Theoretically, the idea sounds good, but in practice, a telescope can only look back in time to the point at which light was created in space. After all, the telescope captures nothing but light. Since there was very probably no light in the Planck era, we cannot see this dark age with our current technical capabilities. Now on Earth, we have other telescopes for this reason. Facilities like the Square Kilometer Array Radio Telescope in South Africa actually hear almost to the Big Bang. Nevertheless, nobody has heard this event so far. Now the Big Bang is being put to the test. According to the latest findings, it either did not exist at all, or it lies much further back in time than only 13.8 billion years. It's also conceivable at the moment that the process of the birth of the universe was completely different from what researchers have calculated so far. We want to devote ourselves in this video actually not to the question of the Big Bang, but to look at the time or the state of the cosmos before the starting point. In order to understand the following theories better and to have a picture of the theses of the researchers, it is quite important, however, to know the previous assumption of the Big Bang and the presumed events in the young universe. But now, let's look at what are the most common and spectacular explanatory models about the events before the beginning of the universe. New theories about the time before the beginning of our time. For a long time, there were three standard assumptions about the time before the beginning of our time. It was said that there was simply nothing before that. Others believed that our universe developed from a predecessor cosmos. A third variant assumed that before the origin of our cosmos, something could have existed that we simply cannot imagine with our scientific possibilities and the thinking ability of our brains. In the meantime, these basic assumptions have been joined by numerous other exciting theories that are largely based on the latest findings in quantum mechanics. The idea of quantum fluctuation as the origin of the universe states that before the birth of our present cosmos, there existed a primordial ground in which there were only quanta in their undefined form. The potential was present, but there was no matter. Still further back, a precursor cosmos could have collapsed at the end of its time. The potential materialized before, dissolved in a final event, and went into the still mysterious primeval ground of all being. There this potential slumbered maybe for a second, or maybe eons. It's not sure whether this state between two universes knows the dimension of time. Within quantum mechanics so far, we can say that there cannot be actually nothing. Now, however, we do not yet know today how far the explanation possibility of quantum physics reach. Purely theoretically, there should have been something before the birth of our cosmos, like the already mentioned potential in the balanced resting state. Now, researchers have found out on the basis of the movement of the cosmic background radiation that the universe expands. At the beginning, it looked completely so, as if the whole cosmos known up to now would expand from a source. This source would be the Big Bang. In the meantime, however, irregularities have appeared in these observations, according to which it would also be possible that only a part of the entire cosmos is fed from this source. In plain language, this could mean that there may be other sections in our total universe that originated from a different initial event, yet we may still be sharing a space. Up to now, it is also not sure whether all these parts originated at the same time. The bubble universe theory states that there may be many individual bubbles within an incredibly large and possibly even infinite universe. The bubbles can be of different ages and sizes according to quantum theories, and moreover, different physical sizes and also time dimensions can prevail in the bubbles. You can imagine the universe fed from many sources like water bubblers in a thermal bath. 
Bubblers blow the water with different intensity through different nozzles into one and the same basin. In this case, there could have been many other sub-universes with an incredible variety of backstories before our corner was formed. The multiverse theory goes even one step further, because according to this theory, there are innumerable dimensions and worlds. And partly, these can be within our dimensions, or they are before, behind, above, or somewhere else. You can already see the question about a before would not arise at all with the theory of the multiverse. This list could be continued by some more theories, but we are now at the end of the video and we'd like to ask you, as always, for your own ideas. Do you know any other theories about the beginning and the time before the formation of our universe that you would like to share with us? Or do you have anything else to say about the topic? Then go right ahead. We welcome your contributions to the topic and a lively discussion in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. Thanks for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you back at Simply Space again soon.